afternoon, Chelsea. Hi, how's it going? Well, welcome to Wyoming. <laughs> Wyoming, where are we? I know I'm from Arizona, and so, so you don't do snow. I do not. Well, and I mean, we have the White Mountains in Arizona where you can travel three hours from Phoenix and go snowboarding, and that's what I like. And then you can come back down to the sunshine and tank tops. Yeah. Here, I'm just like, I don't know what to wear because I go in one place and I come out and it's snowing. And I mean, it was fine earlier. It's one of those situations. <laughs> It's rough, but I'm, you know, it's worth it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. We'll just get out and do it. Yeah. Um, you are talking uh, this week here about um, the Yes. Written by three men. <laughs> uh, well, and it was on. Of my favorite writers. So you know, leave right Sorry. Yeah. Oh my gosh! And when you when that song was was it brought to you or did you? Yeah. Uh, well, I had heard it on Lee Bryce's record, of course, and my manager actually brought it to me, and it was one of those things where I was like, I've heard that song, and I know that voice, what, 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 and he was like, I think it'd be really cool if a woman sang this, what do you think? And I was just like, wow, that's not, you know, I was like, my, my manager is really, really smart, but it's like, that's crazy, and I had to think about it for a minute, and like, as soon as I thought about, listened to it, and thought about, like, me singing it, I was like, oh my gosh, it would completely change, like, not completely changed, but it would put a different outlook on the song and what it's saying. And it totally, I think at least personally, it totally did. And um, it's, been, it's been really good every time I play the song live. I mean, people, my shows that I play are super high energy. A lot of time I don't do any sort of ballad anything. And because um, I played the NASCAR races for so long and then they don't do, they don't do ballads. No, no, it's all high energy and craziness. And this song, it was really fun to see. Like when I would like halfway through my set, we'd play this song and all of a sudden everything would get quiet. And I've never seen an audience like while I'm on stage, just come towards the stage, like trying to listen and just so intrigued by what's going on. And that has been so cool to see. <laughs> it's like one of those aha moments, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, oh, this is great. As we were I'm, I'm prepping for this talk, and I talked about that concept of creative courage. Mm -hmm. So when you get ready with a song, whether it's this one or something, or you know, the song that you were talking about before, it's something that you write yourself. Yeah. And you're ready to release that out into the world. What is that feeling like? That you know, the day before it goes on iTunes, you know that. Kind yeah, of and I mean, I've that. definitely, I've definitely written a couple of those, and it's you know, like I was saying, it, they're. For me, at least, they're typically about people or experiences I've been through yeah. as any artist. And, you know, one of them was like, oh, well, you know, what if he hears that? What's he going to think? And I get complete and total anxiety about it. Because, <laughs> you know, like I was, I was telling you earlier, there's a song I wrote recently. And it's like, oh, well, what if that person hears that? And I don't really think I want that person to hear that. I don't want them to know all these things. And at the same time, you know, you sit down and you have to you write because you have something you have to say or get out. It's like, for me, it's always just like a counseling session, therapy. And um, then you write it and then people start to like it. And you're like, oh, um, now that person's going to know absolutely everything. <laughs> cool. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's cool because it is, it's exciting. I don't really like riding things like roller coasters and stuff. So that's my adrenaline rush. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, I, I don't jump out of airplanes. I love songs. That's been. We were actually talking about that at lunch today when we sat down, and I was just like, I mean, I can barely ride the rides at Disneyland. I grew up, you know, riding horses and dirt bikes, and I like snowboarding and act, stuff like that. Things that I'm in control of. But it's like a song like that. Like once you put it out there, you're no longer in control of what people hear about it. Like everybody reads into it their own way, and it's just out there, and you just kind of have to let it do what it does. And, you know, you're putting your, your own self, your own heart, if you will, not to be cheesy, but in, out into the world. And it's like, all right, like, I'm completely vulnerable now. Like, I'm standing in front of you, showing you everything. And that's a very, very scary feeling. But it's really rewarding at the end of it, too. You know, I mean, it's, for me, it's a very brave thing. <laughs> it, that, that's the whole point. Yeah. To me, vulnerability is... is Bravery. Yeah. Well, well, and that makes somebody, somebody and it, it and it makes you so much better too. Oh I mean, God. every time you do something like that, or for those people that want to accomplish jumping out of a plane, if you will, it's like I know you, you know, you become a bigger person from that in the end. And you know, if you, as long as you have that in the back of your head, it's like, okay, I can do this. <laughs> is is that what? Because that's kind of the next question: is how do you handle that creativity means vulnerability means courage. Yeah. Okay the courage to show up and right. be seen. 
how do you handle that? I mean, to me, it's it's the process of like it's with the songwriting part of it. You write a song because you need to get that out. You need to do that do that part of it. And you can't when you're in a writing session, and even if I'm in a writing session with people I've never written with, it's like you can't be self-conscious you've got to be completely open because that's what it's all about so it's like do that in that time and don't think about what's going to come after it and then when it comes time for all of that other stuff it's like well you know this is what I do and a lot of life experiences if they're not good for anything else but a really good song then I'm all about it (laughs) it's like you know what I created something beautiful out of something that I experienced and that's the rewarding part of it and that's the part that gets me through is the fact that well I made something out of this and you know I used to not really be a writer and I came to town and you know I fell in love with it and so now it's the fact that these songs are getting out there and such I'm like my songs weren't getting heard my stories weren't getting heard and now they are and you know that means so much more than being scared of somebody hearing what I'm going to say so the Ultimately, the, the need to tell your story outweighs yeah, the fear of for sure. Your story. Yeah, because I mean, it, there's always somebody out there that's going through what I'm going through or you're going yeah. through. I mean, we can all, we all connect that way. And um, like one of the songs I wrote that we were playing a lot at NASCAR races. There's this one girl and she came up to me in tears and she's like, "I just went through this and that song meant so much." Like I, it, it brought this girl to tears and I yeah. was like. Wow, and she will she'll message me on Twitter and stuff and say that she still listens to it. It still helps her get through the day. And I'm just like, hey, like I helped somebody. I helped somebody understand that they're not alone in what they're experiencing, and that that's so cool. I mean, not everybody gets to do that. So no, yeah. (laughs) Other people have to, you know, be like psychologists. Yeah, and you have to like sift through it. And for me, it's like I go on about with my friends, and I'll sit down like one of my really close friends, Rachel Farley. I write with a lot, and her and I will sit down, and she'll be like, all right here we go and it's just we just lay it all out there and um that that definitely writing with somebody you're close with also helps being able to just be straight up about it and those people also know how crazy you are so (laughs) they're like oh gosh um how do you filter feedback because you can't take it all in Mm -hmm. go crazy listening to everybody's opinion that you have to let in the constructive criticism yeah um who how do you decide who falls in what I mean, I definitely listen, you know, my family always, my parents and my cousin and my brother, like I always send it to my brother, he's out in LA and he's, I've always looked up to him with creative stuff and I definitely always send things to him and it, you know, it's really just like the people I trust the most, the people who know who I am and know what I would be proud of and what I wouldn't at the end of the day, since I, it's hard to separate yourself from those things. So I really put the trust into a lot of my family to be like, hey, you know, this doesn't sound as much like you as this did or things like that and so yeah I just think like those people my family that know me the best know you know they know Chelsea and they know if that's if a good way of sharing my story or not yeah yeah and how how, in what way has it gotten easier to ignore everybody else I mean you know what I mean like like, yeah that's that's, and that was hard at first how 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 has that gotten easier what, what, what inside of you got stronger so that it got easier to go, you know, a random person on the internet? They get so get mean. Yeah, and, and it can. Like, there can be one little thing that you read and you're just like, oh. And you, you, be, you get to a point where you're just like, man, how, like, how can you say that? Like, wow, that's, that's bold that you're sitting on your side of the computer saying yeah. that. You the don't even know me. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I grew up showing horses competitively and stuff. I mean, I've been dealing with it since then, and a lot yeah. of people deal with it in high school and junior. I mean, gosh, only knows how young it goes now. Yeah. And um, it's terrible, and I hate it. And there was a long time where I just wouldn't read comments because it would just ruin my day. But now, at the same time, I'm just like, you know what? That's what they think, and they're going to be negative. So I just look at it like, hey, I've got all, like that for that one negative comment, I've got so many other positive comments and people that are supporting me. So I try to look at the positive side of it. I don't, I don't not read the negative comments because I can't help it. (laughs) I like, because I really try to, you know, get involved with everybody when they're talking to me on the internet and whatnot. But those negative people, I'm just like, hey, I'm a true believer in karma and being a good person. And it's like, you know, you'll figure it out that that's not the way to go, but that's not my problem to have to deal with their negativity. Right. Yeah. I think that's a really good attitude. <laughs> um, it, it's definitely hard at times, but you got to remind yourself of it. Yeah, mm-hmm. there will still be days where... Oh, somebody will say something, something and it'll, it'll crush my day, but 
you know, it happens. It's it's part of it. Hopefully less and less. Okay. Yeah, I would hope so. I would. The, it's a slow business, <laughs> as you know, doing this. Um, and how do you handle that need to stay patient about reaching your goals? <laughs> I was talking about or that today, you too. <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> being in this business, I've been in it, in my opinion, for quite a while now. And I've been through a lot and I've been crushed a lot and I've had a lot of exciting things happen. Mm-hmm. And the best thing and I actually was out for Super Bowl events um, this past weekend and I hung out with this group called Celebrity Sweat and met a lot of really interesting people and one of them was the football player uh, Doug Flutie and he told me you know he was really nice and wanting to give me advice and he was like hey just enjoy the good moments work your butt off and he just you know said a bunch of stuff like that and uh, that's just the thing is is like you really just have to enjoy all the good moments like here being at CRS like I'm talking to all of you guys and it's really cool, like I'm working. Today, I'm working and I'm doing it and I'm talking to people about my music and I'm enjoying it. Like I'm really taking the time to enjoy it because there may be a week that it's really dead and it's, you know, you have to push through that. But it's just one of those things that it's like, man, there's been some times that have been really hard and there's some times that are really great and I try to just keep myself level, like not get in too too excited about something if it like on waiting on it and then not to let myself get totally crushed if something doesn't happen and whatnot it's like but that's the thing is like just when I'm actually working and doing stuff is like I just try so hard to enjoy it because it's a little it's a roller coaster all the time Well, you can, but then do your careers over. I don't think I could get off. This is, as much as I don't like roller coasters, I'm locked into this one. (laughs) (laughs) I refuse to get off this one. (laughs) When, and I'm looking for a specific example, not names, but situations, Mm -hmm. of when maybe you didn't stay as patient as you should have done, or you made a decision and, you know, six months down the line, you're like, yeah, maybe that wasn't the right thing for me. Yeah. What was it that got you into that situation? Is that stuff like impatience, inexperience? anxiousness um, I mean for me it was just unknown it was just being a little naive just not knowing and just you know people being this this is what you should do and I was like oh my gosh okay that sounds you know yeah like this is exciting this sounds like a big thing and kind of being a kid about it and um, nowadays I act more like an adult about it if you will (laughs) I I think through things a lot more I'm a lot more um, educated on the business I think it's just a growing thing truly I think anybody can say when they first start out in the music business that they're just like, oh my gosh, I've been through this, that, and the other thing, and it was yeah. a whirlwind, and this was great, and this was bad. Yes. <laughs> and it's 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 a learning process. You got to go through it all to know when to be able to be smart enough to know when something is right and when something isn't necessary. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes. I think it takes a long time. No matter what you are, artist, whether you're a sculptor or a painter mm-hmm. or a musician. I think it takes a long time to find out who you are as an artist and how you want to tell the story. Yep. Um, what helped you figure that out? Was getting it wrong helped you figure it out? Oh, or for was it sure. Watching other people and going, oh, that's what I, you know, that, mm-hmm. that, that's inspiring to me. Um, for me, I, I'm not a person that really, like, I watch other people because I respect other people's art and what they do. Yeah. Um, but for me, I really try to focus on myself when it comes to what I'm doing because what yeah, I'm doing is like right yeah 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 but yeah I that's mean a cool, that's a cool, way to think that's a cool yeah take on that attitude, that kind of thing. yeah I mean honestly I've never done that I mean I've had like my idols like Shania Twain and Pink yeah. and stuff like that but for me it's really taken the experience of it all like trying and it not working and trying and it not working <laughs> over and over again or you know just like it kind of being a moot point and um, really just within this last year, I feel like I've truly rounded myself out as an artist with all the things I want to say, the songs I've written. Yeah. And it, it is, it's truly a growing thing that like everything in this business is. But, you know, like I just said the other day, I was like, I truly feel like I finally have all these things. And I mean, that's that's from messing up over and over again or not doing the right thing over and over again. And you know you can be mad about the things that went wrong but those are what made me who I am now and those are the reason why I sound the way I do and look the way I do and why my music is what it is and why I'm telling the stories that I am so it's like it's truly because of the things that didn't necessarily explode or go right yeah, you know successful quote yeah I guess like and it's not yeah. like it wasn't successful I mean I've been doing amazing things I did all the NASCAR I've opened for 
amazing artists. Like it hasn't been for not, but it hasn't yeah b done the like the huge successful thing. And so for me, it's just like all those little things that didn't go insanely well or whatever. Yeah. They true th those are what made me the artist that I am. Yeah. And it's like so I can be bummed about it and say oh well I'm impatient and it takes a long time. But at the same time, it's like oh well. But that's why I'm doing what I do now, and I love it even more now than what I was doing back then. Right. So I'm like, it's actually a really good thing. <laughs> and what's that, that process of, you know, when, that moment when you realize, oh, man, it's just, this wasn't quite right. And then getting to that, oh, but here's what I've learned from it. You know, the time yeah. in between, like, what do you need to do to get there? Do you need to kind of, you know, beat up on yourself for a couple of days and then get over it? Or do you, is that like 24 hours? <laughs> oh, I think it's so much it? longer than what? that. I mean... I've never beaten myself up about music or experiences that I've done. And, I mean, you get down about it, but I've never been like, oh, you know, dang, I shouldn't have done that. But, you know, music-wise, it's one of those things that, like, I'll get to the next project or the, the newer songs that I've written, and I'll be like, oh, these are more me now than those even were. It's like once you're really far removed from that one project or whatever you were working on at the time or that one experience once I'm completely yeah. removed from it and looking at it from the outside I'm like oh that wasn't quite right that's why that didn't completely click it wasn't quite right and you know like the music I'm writing right now and what I'm doing right now like for the first time truly I'm like wow like this really feels like me like no one's influencing me like this yeah. is this is all Chelsea there's no one chiming in this is all me yeah. And I think that's the refreshing part is that I think every artist probably goes through a time where they're like listening to all the, like you said, all exactly. these people coming in saying things and you're trying to do that because you respect them and what they're telling you to do. But for me, it's gotten to the point where I'm like, no, I know, I know now I'm, I'm not dumb. I've learned a lot yeah. and it's like, no, this is, this is what I want. Yeah. And I think every artist probably has to reach that point where they have to kind of put their foot down and say, no, this is me. Yeah. And it's not going to get any different than that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Think, and that's, that's the work. Yep. Right there. Yeah. Because it's, I, I just had this in another conversation. <laughs> what you're describing is boundary setting. Yeah. Is this is okay with me? This is not okay with me? Yeah. That is extremely difficult. And that's a life. And it's thing. hard because you work with such great people yeah. and you want to respect what they have to say. But at the same time, it takes a long time to be able to be strong enough to be like, no, this yeah. is me. This is yeah. this is the Chelsea, and if nobody likes that, then we're kind of out of luck because that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> <laughs> now I get to ask a question I have never asked before. Um, in this year, I kind of set myself this project, like to every month do something that scares mm -hmm. me. Oh, I've seen that um, people do that. That's so fun. And I'm like, I hope it's not scary. I'm really terrified of horses. Really? They like frighten me because I'm like these. Can kill me if they choose to. Oh, <laughs> no. So they friend me. So I'm actually going to an equestrian show and two weeks from now in Murfreesboro. And is it, what and kind of horses is it? Um, it's kind of, it's, it's the, it's like the Tennessee Equine Fair or something okay. like that. Okay, um, okay. So it's all sorts of things. Sorts, yep. like, like demos and classes and, you know, gear that they're selling. Yeah. And all sorts of just everything. Oh, I didn't even know they had that. Um, but I was like, now that you're here, I'm like, okay, any, any, the horse girl, it's <laughs> like, okay, how do I, cause I'm like, they can, they can feel it that I'm anxious. <laughs> and, and that's the thing is, is horses, they can, like, I mean, my brother, for example, I mean, I've ridden horses all my life and all of everybody in my family has been like put on a horse when they were an infant yeah, and yeah. then on. And I was kind of the only one of the kids that continued on really with it. Too. Yeah. But like my brother, he's one of those people that every time he gets on a horse, like they, it just doesn't work. They're just like, you should not be on horses. <laughs> yeah, horse and it's like, hysterical. I that you don't be yeah. <laughs> he's just, I, and I don't know why it's, it's just so funny, but, um, you know, with horses, it's, it's one of the things like, yeah, you, I mean, at the end of the day, yeah, they're stronger than you and everything, but they truly don't, they really don't know that. I mean, they really are yeah, extremely, they're, they're extremely they're, gentle. They're, I mean, like, and some of them are a little more rambunctious, of course, but like yeah. the horses I grew up around and believe me, I've been bucked off, trampled, drug and kicked more than time, more times than See, you want to know. <laughs> no, but I'm saying, but I'm saying that it's one of those things that I learned from all those experiences. And now yeah. I can sit here and tell you that <laughs> if you don't act afraid of the horse and you know that, you know, you can pull on this rein and that bit is in the horse's mouth. I mean, yeah. that's, you know, it's like if somebody did that to you, I mean, no matter how strong you are, that's going to, that's going to take a hold of something. Yeah. But I mean, 
horse, they're an amazing thing. Like in where, whatever horse you're going to get on, especially at something like that is going to be a horse that's really used to that sort of thing. Yeah. And I mean, if I were you, I'd just be like, man, like this is what the Cowboys did. Like they had to do this every day <laughs> and you know, this is their car. I mean, that's how I look at it. I mean, whenever yeah. I'm on my horse, I'm like, I, I literally always, like, it's probably silly, but I think back, I'm like, well, this is what everybody did every day. Like everybody rode horses right. and it's like, oh, like you got like put yourself in a place that's like, oh, this is so cool. Like this isn't scary. Like I'm John Wayne. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, horses, you can't, you can't make yourself not afraid of them because like I said, I don't really like riding roller coasters and I couldn't possibly get on a roller coaster without that just happening. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, when you go to get on the horse, like go up and pet it and kind of get to know it before you get on it, yeah. you know, and all of that and bond with it like you would a dog. Yeah. And then you'll be like, oh, okay, you know, my horse Dave is pretty cool here. These are Dave's corks, <laughs> you know. It's like it's like going on a date. You're dating the horse. Right. <laughs> the last question I always end with is much more liked than any of this. Um, <laughs> is if you had to make a, make an album that was the soundtrack of your life with songs that have been with you that you grew up with that were important to you, what makes the record? Oh my gosh, like songs by other artists and whatnot. Yeah. Holy moly. I know. That's insane. Tom Petty's The Waiting is the Hardest Part would be one of them. Um, Bob Dylan's Boots of Spanish Leather. I'm trying to think. Um, Pink's Raise Your Glass. <laughs> um, let's see. And I mean all of Shania Twain songs, because <laughs> just, her whole catalog. just just all of it. I mean, that's what I actually grew up. I was like, this person knows me, you know. <laughs> I mean, a lot of those a lot of those things like Tom Petty and Shania Twain, Bob Dylan, Pink. I mean, that's why I listen to them because I can like those are my idols, and I connect with so much that they say. Um, so it's like if you went and listened to any of those, you'd probably be like, okay. Well, first of all, Chelsea's a little crazy, but second of all, she doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> oh, it's oh, oh my gosh, mine goes from musical theater to rap to Bob Dylan. To, it's crazy. Yeah, I mean, there, there's so many things. Oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> that that is a hard question. That's like when somebody's like, "What's your favorite song?" and you're just like, "Which genre?" Exactly. And then, yeah. you know, and male or female. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And am I, is it sad or is it happy? And it's like, I, there's a lot of options here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. No problem.